Hello everyone, Michael back with another video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a chat system in your Power App. If you enjoy Power Apps, Power BI, Power Automate, Teams, and SharePoint videos, feel free to subscribe because we'll be putting on more videos in those areas. And now for my intro. Okay, so we are going to be building a chat system in our Power App. So it's gonna be more of a fun video. Uh, I currently use chat systems, uh, sometimes in my power apps, it all depends on what the user wants. Usually people just communicate through teams, but if you want to make like a chat log in your power app, I'll show you how to do that in this video. And then um, I also have another video idea where you can make like a comment system for like items. So if you have like an item in a SharePoint list, and you want like a comment system, you want like an approval or something, I'll make another video for that. But let's go ahead and get into this video. So to create a chat system in our Power App, you wanna have a Power App, and then we are going to create a SharePoint list so we can store all the comments. Let's go ahead and make a new SharePoint list. I'm just using my marketing SharePoint. So let's go ahead and make a marketing chat log. So we're storing all the chat logs in a SharePoint list. It's gonna be each chat is an individual uh, uh, record in the list. I'm gonna create a couple columns. I might create more later. Uh, just depending on what I actually need. But first, we'll just go ahead and rename the title. Uh, we'll use this one for the user that actually created the chat. And then we'll do a multiple lines of text for chat message. And then let's also add like an active or deleted. So we'll do deleted. Actually, let's say chat status. Is I want to have it to where users are able to remove their records and you can either remove it or just make it inactive. I will do active and then delete it. And then we will also show our high columns. We just want to have created by and created. So that will give us a time and who was created by. Okay, I think this is a good start for this. So we just have the five, the three columns and then the two metadata columns that are automatically added with each item. Let's go back into our SharePoint, I mean my Power App. Let's go ahead and add that SharePoint list. We can actually use that. Marketing, and it is marketing chat log. Okay, so I'm on my navigation screen for my Power App. I can navigate to the main menu. I'm going to create a separate screen uh, dedicated for this chat. Uh, if you want to implement it in a screen of your own already, you can go ahead and do that. I'm going to put it on a separate screen. So if you want to have like a pop-up, you just like copy everything I'm doing, but just make it in your little pop-up in your Power App. Let's go ahead and make a new screen and we'll call this screen chat log. Okay, and then we're just gonna make this button to where it can navigate to uh, the new screen. So screen, chat log, and that's just using the navigate function. Okay, click on go, and now we have a blank screen right here. Okay, so let's go ahead and get a title at the top. So we will do marketing chat log. Make that in the middle, make this like 20, uh, maybe like 30, and then we'll just bold it. Okay, so we, the main thing we wanna do with this is have a flexible height gallery. So let's go ahead and choose the flexible height gallery. You can choose blank if you want to, but you might have to add an item to it. I just like doing it. Usually it tosses in a separator for it but it looks like it didn't. And to be honest, I don't really need a separator. So we're gonna go ahead and use a blank one. Blank, blank flexible gallery. And we want this to be right underneath our marketing chat log title. I'm just gonna reorder, reorder this uh, underneath the chat. Let me label this, label title, chat log. Uh, it's good practice to be able to change your component names. Let's go ahead and put this underneath our title right there. So we have our X. We want this to be label title chat log dot height. Because that's going to put it directly underneath. Actually, that needs to go 
the x is going to be zero we're going to copy that formula because we're actually going to use that for the y property so the y property is going to be where it is uh, vertically on your screen so if i just change this to like 200 you can see it goes all the way down there but we're going to do uh, the height of our label because the height of their label we want the exact height and we want it directly underneath so we have it right there and then we just want to make the width property uh, parent that width and then we will adjust the height of it later so for the fields we want the email the user or maybe we just want the created by we might use created by but it's good to log the email of who created it so let's go ahead and we want to get like the chat message Let's go ahead and get the chat message first. So the reason we're using a flexible gallery is because the template size will scale to the biggest component in your gallery. So if I make a, go ahead and add a, a label to this, and we can do it right here. So we have no records right now. I'm just gonna add a couple sample ones because it's gonna be easier to look at. So we'll just do testing. Chat status to active, and then just a generic email in there. Go ahead and add another one. Okay, so we have three messages right here. Go ahead and go to our marketing chat log. So we want to go to our gallery, and then we want to do the items in our gallery. We want the chat log, the marketing chat log. So that is actually the name of my SharePoint list. As you can see, our label right now is just using the title. We want to do this item dot a chat message. So that will get us the message. And then we just want to make this box a little bit bigger and auto height. Okay, so we got the auto height on. Let's go ahead and make the width a little bit bigger. So for this, I'll just do like a parent dot width times 0.4 or like 0.5. We'll do 0.4 because I only want. I want to make like the messaging system look kind of like you have an iPhone, how the messaging looks on that. So your messages will appear on the right hand side. Other users will appear on the left hand side. So that's how we're going to base this on. So because you can see I made all these messages right now, I don't have the filter in there, but uh, we're just going to have these on our right hand side. Let me go ahead and rename this label. So label chat message. And let's go ahead and just put a fill on this. So on the color, we're going to go to the box over here. Let's just make like a light blue background so we can kind of see the message. And so we have the message. Let's go ahead and add another label right here. So we're going to copy the previous one and just paste it. So I just clicked on the component, control C, then control V. And in this one, I actually just want to do like a concatenate. So we want to get like a timestamp of when the message was created. So if I do concatenate this item dot created, we're going to get the actual time that message was created. So let's go ahead and add a little bit more information to our concatenate function. So we want to do uh, created. So we're going to do by a space. So it'll give us a space and then we'll do this item dot uh, created by. So let's see what the issue is here. Valid argument type record expecting a text value instead created by. So that actually contains multiple pieces of information. We just want to use the display name. And as you can see in our little chat, the PM, so the PM needs a space after that. And there we go. We can see that the message was created on this date by uh, Michael. So we want to go ahead and put this directly underneath our chat message. So that will be label chat message X. And then we want to do for the Y property, we want to do label chat message dot y plus label chat message dot height and now we can see it's directly underneath our thing because we're taking the y property of our chat label and then we're 
taking the height property and combining those two and it'll put it directly underneath that. So let's go ahead and change the fill on that to a different color. We'll just do like a light gray. Okay, so we'll do label chat message chat created by. Okay, so we have our two properties right here. Okay, so this is looking pretty good. So we have our three messages right here. So let's go ahead and add a input so where users can input a new message. So we're gonna add an input down here, so text input. And as you can see, it's at the top right now. We wanna put it right beneath our gallery. So the Y property will be gallery four dot Y plus gallery four dot height. So that puts it directly underneath our gallery. And let's go ahead and make this a little bit bigger. So we'll do with the width parent dot width. As you can see, it's kind of off the screen right now. Let's make the X 10 because we want it not directly on the edge of our app, but we want it a little bit in. So let's do like 20. So we'll got our parent dot width. So we'll do minus 40 to account for both sides. And now we can see it is looking good. Uh, for the mode on the right hand side of your input, you want to do multi line because it could be multiple lines. And we'll just make this a little bit bigger under the height property for the input. We'll do like 60. So it's a good amount of space for users to rate a message. And now we'll just rename this to input chat message. And now we need to do a button to have it patched to our SharePoint list so we can add a new message. Let me go ahead and add a new button. And we'll put it like directly underneath that. And we'll just do like button, submit message. Okay, so the on select for this one, we're going to want to do a patch function. So we want to patch it to our uh, chat list, so marketing chat log and since it's a new record it's going to be defaults uh, that formula just creates a new record in your list and now we need to include the the details of what we want to patch so we have a couple fields we have to do we have the email the chat message and chat status so we'll do uh title because that's what the emails listed is so title and we'll just use the user.email and we'll get the user's email with so the chat message. Since there's a space in it, you gotta put single quotes around it. Um, we just wanna get the input chat message dot text. So that's gonna be the text from our input box right there. And since this is a new record, it's going to be active chat status. And since this is a choice field we got to do a curly bracket value and then we just want to set this to equal to active so now we can create new records and if a user actually submits something we want to um, reset the input box so we're just going to do a reset input chat message and then we'll just notify the user saying message has been created and we will just do a notification type information and we'll just change the button to say submit also we're going to change our input to say uh, nothing as our default okay so it's looking pretty good right now let me go ahead and actually submit a new message so we'll just do testing a new message from michael I click on submit. As you can see, we get the notification up here, message has been created, and now we actually get testing a new message from Michael. So that works. Let me just do another one, make sure this actually scrolls correctly. And there we go. So we can see that you can scroll down when there's multiple messages. Okay, so now I wanna make it to where if I didn't create this message, I want it to appear on the left-hand side. And then maybe we will actually change the background just to help identify what messages aren't mine. So we will go to our two uh, labels right here. Those just contain the chat message and who it was created by. 
and we want to actually change the X property on this. So if I set the X property to like zero, it's going to be all the way on the right hand side of the screen. But we're going to do an if statement. So if user dot email equals this item dot email, actually this item dot title, because that's where we are storing that email information. So if they equal each other, we want this to appear on the right hand side of the screen. So we'll do parent.width times like 0.6 and we might adjust this after. If it is another user that submitted the comment, we want to do like parent.width times 0.1, make that equal. And I just have to apply that to both of these. And there we go. So we do have to like fix this a little bit. Uh, we'll do like parent.width. If I didn't create the message, like 0.05, she will do like 0.02. So I didn't create these messages, I created these messages. But we wanna actually make that to like uh, 0.55. So uh, I think that looks pretty good. So now let's go ahead and change the fill property on these two. So I created these messages, I want them to be blue. If not, we'll just make them a different color. So if user, it's gonna be like the same formula. So if user email equals this item dot title, let's make the fill, don't know what the colors look like off the top of my head. So we'll just pick a couple. If I didn't create this item, we'll just use beige. Uh, that blue is way too uh, blue, so I can't even see the message. We'll do like a light blue. And um, instead of applying that to both of the items, I'll just apply it to the message. So we will actually remove that fill on the uh, created by. And just do a light gray for that. So now you can see that our chat system looks pretty, looks pretty good. Um, we're just gonna do one more thing and that is the, if you wanna remove a message. And to do that, we're going to go in our gallery. Let's go ahead and create a new icon. So the icon I like to use for deleting stuff is the trash icon. So each of these will get a trash icon and we only want to delete our messages. So let's go ahead and rename our icon to icon trash. And we want this to appear after um, our message. So like on the right hand side. So for the X property, we're going to do a label chat message dot X plus label chat message dot with. So now it appears on the right hand side of it. And we're going to make this uh, icon black and we'll make it a little bit smaller. We'll just do like 40 and 40. So it appears on the right hand side of our chat messages. And now let's just make it to where if I created this message, I can only see that. So we're going to go to the visible property of that trash icon if user dot the same formula again, if user dot email equals this item dot title uh, true else false. As you can see, um, I didn't create these messages, so I don't have the option to delete them. And now let's go ahead and go to the on select. And we want to patch this. So you can, if you really wanted to, you can remove the item from your SharePoint list. I don't really remove items from my SharePoint list. I usually just do, um, I just patch them and make them uh, deleted using a choice column. So in my marketing chat log, we can probably just do this record or this item. So I'm going to go uh, patch my marketing chat log. So this item, and I'm just going to do chat status. Uh, we created that when we first made the SharePoint list and I'm just going to put a value of deleted in there. Close the curly bracket. And now our patch function if I click on one of these, so let's say I want to delete this message, I just click on it. And if I go to my chat log, just refresh it. Uh, the chat status changed to deleted, which is good. But now we need to put a filter on our gallery to only show active records. 
So we're going to go to a filter, our marketing chat log, and we want chat status equal to active chat status dot value since it's a choice field chat status dot value is equal to active and now it's only showing active records so if i wanted to go ahead and delete this message as well now deleted i want to go ahead and add a new message i can go ahead and submit it and there we go so that is how you create a chat log in your Power App. Uh, there's a lot more customization you can do, but for the time of the video's sake, I tried to cut it down to a couple features. You can definitely make this very intuitive, but just for the sake of the video, we made it pretty quick and this will give you a good idea on how to do it. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you liked it, uh, leave a like, leave a comment. If you have any questions or suggestions, and I will catch you guys in the next video.